Okay, sorry about that. I'm having issues with um, my connection out here. Um, I'm really not even that far out. I'm really not even that far away from civilization and like still shit gets frozen. So just let me know if it starts doing that again. I may just have to stick to YouTube because not forever, but I mean like just for this one if my signal's that bad. Um, so I figured what I was trying to do in the video is explain a little bit about my own little journey and what that's been like. If you can imagine that. Difficult to start with, but we'll get to the rest of it. So, um, naturally, you know, parents had me going to church and all that kind of good stuff. And that backfired. <laughs> in a nutshell, backfired. When I was little, for as long as I can remember, um, I was always different. And I knew that. I knew I was going to be different. I was more passionate than the people around me. I knew that too. I was more passionate about things. Took things more seriously. Um was easily offended by insults and bad behavior. Not so much easily offended these days, but disappointed maybe um, to an extent. But, you know, being little, I was like, when I was real little, I expected better behavior from people. Um, my brain is very old fashioned. <laughs> I, I expect people to act right. Um, and that can make you miserable because expectations lead to disappointment. It's not what the other person does, it's what you think they should do. That's what leads to disappointment, so just remember that. But, you know, when you're three or five, you don't think of that. So, you know, had, had to go to church, been to many different kinds. I've been baptized like four times. <laughs> so, I know what's up. Like, I've been there. And... None of it was really, none of those baptisms especially were because I wanted them. I, I got it a couple times as a kid. And then, I think three times when I was little. And then the fourth time when I was a teenager. And that was just to get get some boy to be more interested in me. And it worked, but I mean, that was it. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. That's why I did it. I was like, I don't know, I was probably 19. I was 18 or 19, but anyway, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Um, kind of feels good to get that off my chest, actually. I don't know why. So, I did all the baptisms, been to all the churches, been to the Bible studies, <clears throat> didn't cut it. When I was maybe nine or ten, um, the army depot I lived on in Pennsylvania, in New Cumberland, for anyone who knows that area, um... I was there like six or seven years, so it's the Army Depot, um, DDC, uh, Defense Distribution Center, if that rings a bell for anyone. I don't even know <laughs> what they're doing. I don't even know if it's the same outfit now. I just know in the 90s, that's what it was. So, but anyway, that's where we lived, off of Bridge Street, and you know that intersection right off that bridge where it splits, and it's the um, Airport One restaurant. You go to the left and it takes you to the to the depot. But anyway, so that's where I lived at this time when I was nine. And um, my next door neighbor, because we lived in a duplex, as or as the British call it, semi-detached. For any of y'all that are watching this, our houses were stuck together. And <laughs> at the porch, you know what I mean? So our porches were connected, and we just kind of met somehow. No, I remember how we met. Wait, no, no, no. I got this now. <laughs> I got it. I was walking on the sidewalk behind the houses, which was actually the front. It's hard to explain. But the houses were old, and, it, and it, they, the way they were set up wasn't didn't make any sense, you know, the way it was done after that. So anyway, I was walking on the sidewalk, like, behind the houses. And I came out of my back door, which was really the front door, and went down the sidewalk, you know, like a 
few yards to the next house and was I had intended to keep going but the house next to me there was this girl my age who was outside um, cleaning up after the dogs because her dad had a couple of big dogs her dad had a dog and her mom had a dog but anyway um, she's cleaning up after him and she had uh, you know what they used to call I don't know what they call them now but they used to call them pooper scoopers all right she had one of them that came from like the store that was on base or something it was a dollar store or something everybody went to <laughs> and I saw that and she's real tomboyish so we were like we were the same but we were still kind of different and I said hey <laughs> I used the same pooper scooper to pick up my dog's droppings. And that was the first thing I ever said to her. And I remember that. And she probably does too. Um, <laughs> and we had like the strongest bond after that. She, at first she thought I was dumb. But like after that we got to know each other. We were inseparable. And we went through a lot together. And you know in just the couple of years that she was there. Because I, I stayed there until I was a teenager. You know, we didn't move away for a while. Um, but she was there like two years or something and left. Um, but in the time that we got to know each other, we, we had a lot of differences because of our upbringing and our, and our household situations and stuff. But um, a lot of our deep beliefs were kind of similar and we just connected like that. And one thing that we were both real big on was nature and animals and especially burying dead animals and showing a lot of respect to animals that had died. And I don't know why that we had that in common because something else about our lives was similar, you know, hardly at all, except both our mothers were from the South. But I mean, other than that, you know, I don't know, but we just really connected on that. So there's something about that that I guess we were both looking for or something. I don't know, but I haven't thought about that much. But we did that, and we took that seriously. You know, dead birds and that. So, we'd do the little animal funeral, and we did it upright. And it was just always like that. And then, you're going to laugh, but I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> it's okay if you laugh. I'm, I'm totally fine with it. I, it's cool. But, when I was an adolescent, um, and, you know, I don't know, 1998 or whenever it was, 97, <laughs> when The Mummy came out, um, I was hooked, hooked, and that was the first time, that was the first time I had seen something that was different. That was the first time I'd really and truly, well, I can't say that because me and my mom would go do stuff here and there that was different, but <clears throat> like we'd go to powwows and stuff like that too, you know, all through my life. But the first time I remember really being struck, really being, you know, knocked on my ass in a good way was when the mummy came out and I saw something, I saw a system that was radically different from everything I'd ever known. <laughs> Cause it is totally different. And it's not necessarily Eastern African. I wouldn't consider that Eastern. You know what I mean? Like, I guess it just depends, but it's African, you know, and their level of enlightenment that they had achieved and their level of ascension that they had achieved, you know, before everything went to shit, um, in my humble opinion, I, I you know, uh, the, the, the things they had done and the progress they had made is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I saw that movie and I thought, oh my God, I was like, you mean, <laughs> they think I'm weird. Look, look, look. They think I'm weird because I'm walking with this. 
they think I'm weird. They, they were coming this way, and then they turn, and they're like, oh, or they turn around. <laughs> yes, bitch, be afraid. I have the darkness. I'm just kidding. Well, but anyway, I'm just playing with you. So, um, Egypt. Okay, all right, now, I saw that movie, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I saw that there was, I had uh, options besides church. And I thought, so I'm different. Other people are different too. And I was like, hmm, all right. I. <laughs> and let me tell you, that's when getting on the computer was, you know, turning into a thing. AIM, chat rooms, you, you know, whatever. Well, um, so I would go, I saw that and I was like 12 or something or maybe 13 and I saw that and I went to the computer. I was like, oh, I got to know more about this. I don't have any books on it. How do I do research? Computer. Ye old Windows 98. So I sat, I sat down and you know did the little plus signs in between the words <laughs> to do my search. Remember that? It's weird how you forget stuff, you know, when it's been so long. But anyway, um, and I would do that. And I found all kinds of information. There was just a, a plethora of information, just an eternity of, of stuff to read. And I studied the calendar. I studied you know, rituals. I studied um, all the all the um, pharaohs and shit, you know, all, the dynasties, the timeline, the time periods, what each time period was like. You know, I studied the deities and, and all of their, you know, qualities and their stories and I studied the climate, the language. I knew the hieroglyphic, heretic, coptic, and demotic alphabets uh, by the time I was 14 years old. In just a year or two, I'd studied and, and knew all of those alphabets and knew how they looked. I could read some of it. I knew some words. Um, you know, studied other uh, historical Egyptologists that were famous, you know, budge everybody, you know. And I just knew that shit forwards and backwards, inside and out, top to bottom, you know, back to front. Like, I knew it. I had studied it so hard because it was so wildly different. And I thought, oh man, I need more of this, you know, just to see something different. And that really spoke to me because it, there was so much to learn. And I did. I did learn it. You know, I did pretty good for somebody that was just, for a kid that was doing it voluntarily. I, I have to say I did pretty good. Um, but Another thing that kind of added to it, I stuck with that for a long time, and here and there I still do. Um, <clears throat> but there was a, my mother came home one day, I was like 14 maybe or 13, my mother came home one day with a book that was called Crossing Over, and the book was mainly, um, it was written by a girl who had grown up Amish, but left because, you know, she met somebody. Hey, doggy. <laughs> hey, doggy. But um, she had met some guy at the market or whatever, and she decided to leave the Amish and go marry him and just, you know, live like the rest of us. They actually call us the English. They, they call non-Amish people in, in America the English, which is funny because it's actually not predominantly uh, what we are, <clears throat> what you're dealing with. I can only speak for white Americans, obviously. I don't want to speak for my own kind. But what you're mainly dealing with is Scots, Irish, and or and or uh, German. That's the bulk. And you got, you know, Polish is kind of up there too, depending on what area you go to. But anyway, another video for another time, I guess. But they actually call us the English, um, which shows you how old their view viewpoint is, because the Amish are German, but. They're a weird group of Germans that like kind of broke away and really, really did their own thing because they were so different. And at that time, you know, they, they were just surrounded by English, so that's why, in a nutshell. But anyway, um, 
so the girl left the Amish and was like, all right, I'm going to go live in the real world, uh, as, as people say, and, you know, be normal, quote unquote. Well, um, and I read that book and the book was her thoughts on that and what that was like and letters that she had printed in the book between, um, her and her parents. And the letters were really good because, you know, that was showing what her parents thought and stuff like that. And, of course, they weren't happy with it, but, you know, say la vie. Um, so that was good. That book, and I didn't realize that when I was 13 or 14 when I read it, but I'm realizing it now because that was 20 years ago. But looking back, I see now that that book affected me so much on a subconscious level because it, it, it that girl showed me in that book that you can break away from everything you know and it's okay to, to turn your back on what you grew up with you'll still survive you know you're not going to lose who you are because who you are is going to be there no matter what no matter what you've been taught or no matter what you try you know no matter what phase you go through you're still you're still the same soul you're just learning different things you know, it's, you're not going to dwindle and die or wither away and disappear just because you're, you're changing your system a little bit. And that's what that book taught me. And I thought, you know what? Yeah, it's okay to do something different. That's all right. And after that, I was like fearless. And that's probably not what my mother intended by giving me that book. <laughs> but I'm telling you, it, it was part of one of the books that changed my life. So, after that, when I got to be a teenager, um, you know, uh, before I was working and going places and stuff like that, I was still kind of screwing around at home just studying Egyptology shit, which I will never get tired of. <laughs> um, we went to powwows a lot, you know, because, re well, really they're fun and you can buy cool stuff and the food's good. Um, if you've never had funnel cake, you need to try it. Uh, fry bread is good depending on who makes it, I think. Or, you know, yeah, depending on who makes it. I know that sounds weird because it's really simple, but you'd be surprised. Um, but aside from that, like I knew, especially being from the South, the, a huge, huge chunk of people here um, have Indian in their DNA anyway. Because the... Um, Scots Irish that did come down here, a lot of them got on so well with the Indians, they just kind of married and it really blended. People outside the South would say, Oh, no, no, you guys don't do that, you're all racist. Not necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily. Um, when we take DNA tests, all that shit comes up. So, another video for another time, I can't get into that now, but um, because I'm a bit passionate about defending people against false accusations, but I can't, I can't get in that gear right now, for real. So, <clears throat> we would go, you know, to powwows and look at stuff and buy their books and everything and, and read. I started really reading about that. And then once again, I went back to the old computer and start doing research on all the Indian stuff, quote unquote. And let me tell you, <clears throat> let me tell you, reading about the Indian stuff was what really, really opened the door for me. Really, really opened the door. Because <clears throat> once you start reading about their stuff, there's so many levels and so many layers. Not that everybody else doesn't have it too, they do. It's just that this is where I started. Um... It's just where, it's just, that's how it was laid out for me. And it's not like my, it's not like my parents, you know, emphasized that. They didn't. Um, not at all. You know, like, um, my mom's into genealogy, but that it was never, the mixing was never really touched on all that much. I probably wasn't really that much of it anyway, but it was obviously there because it was coming up on DNA tests. Even the ones in the beginning that weren't all that good, you know what I mean? Because some of them were bogus in the beginning. <laughs> but, um, so I started learning about that. And that was when I started studying government stuff. 
because that's what it leads to, let's be real. <clears throat> and the government, I also want to throw this out, the government and the people they represent, quote unquote, are not the same. The government does not represent what the people think. The government do their own thing. <laughs> let's be honest. So, you read about what the government does and did to people, and then you think about what, like, average people are like, and like, well, shit, that's weird, but another video for another time. So, I studied all that, and then it, that got me into government conspiracies, and it also got me into studying starseed stuff, like, you know, what constellation you come from, what star system you come from, uh you know, real, like, otherworldly type shit like that. Really deep stuff like that. And I, I read all of that stuff. You know, I read, I knew all the big websites. I knew all the big books that were out. Um, you know, every time I got a little bit of money, I would, before I was, like, working and had a job and had my own paycheck and stuff, uh, whenever I got Christmas money or birthday money, whatever, I'd, I'd use it a lot of the time and buy books. I had a good little library going when I was a teenager. You know, I had, I had several books. And I got older and still kept up with all the Egyptian stuff, still kept up with Indian stuff for a little bit. I learned what I could from that, and then and then I put it to rest. I didn't stay with it but for a few years. But, I, but when I did, I was waist deep in it. Like, I, I, once again, you know, studying it inside and out, backwards and forwards. So, after that, you know, I started reading about everything else. I just went from, like, one thing to the next to the next. Studied the Tao. Studied um, I Ching. Studied Buddhism. Uh, when my son was an infant, I was studying Hinduism. Really studying Hinduism. Like, deep, deep, deep. You know, the astrology, the Ayurveda, everything else about it. You know, everything else around that, that it, that it eventually leads to. And I was reading about... Uh, meditation and um, you know getting out of the reincarnation and and uh, you, you name it I was looking at it I, I mean I took it seriously um, like I always do when I study things I, and learn I take it seriously well <clears throat> so doing all that you know and then really uh, by the end of it now I've really come back to center because I've come back to I've come back around, and I, I do, I'm, you know, I'm Norse pagan, so, I mean, all I did was, like, genetically, it came back to center, so, and that's my background, that, you know, plus the Celtic, of course, and I dabble in a bit of that, too, and I've got some good, good, good books on that as well, so I've got a little bit of everything, I've, I've touched on just about all of it, um, and, of course, I think I have the best Egyptology books, but that's just me. So. <laughs> but I have a badass collection. I'll, I'll say that. Once I got older and started working and, like, had my own paycheck, all I did... I mean, I bought clothes and shit, too, but, I mean, I bought books. So. It was a big deal to me. And even now, you know, I wouldn't call myself an expert in any of it. Um... You know, I haven't had any formal education in any of those things I've mentioned. Except for the Catholicism. And it's like the only one I've... You know, the church is like, well, I don't care which church is. I just don't want to fool with it. <laughs> like, I got turned off, though. I, got, I really got turned off. Like, that they... They couldn't answer my questions. And they didn't go deep enough for, for what I needed. And for what I was looking for and the questions I had. They just didn't go deep enough. And they were more interested in, you know telling me to just believe some story than uh, than anything else. You know, they just kind of like, it's more about threatening people than letting them figure it out on their own. And I don't like that kind of thing. So the system didn't work for me really. Um, but anyway, so I, I mean, that's, you know, in a nutshell, I guess that's my little journey. I just figured I would share that because um, I haven't really brought it up yet. And I know People like me um, that put themselves out there as, you know, spiritualists and uh, energy workers and stuff like that. 
Um, you know, they may as well give their own background story at, at some point, so uh, I'm giving you mine. <laughs> um, I could go into more detail, I guess, but just for now, that's that's pretty much it. And I still read about other stuff here and there, too. You know, like, I, it's not like I've forgotten. I, I still... I still dabble in other stuff here and there. Um, and a couple of days ago on YouTube, I was watching um, the Luxor Temple uh, celebration thing. It was pretty sweet. So, I enjoyed that. I'm about to walk into a spider web. I already have. Whoopsies. And then also, I just want to show you this tree right here. I could, if I could cut that down and use it as a staff, that, do you know how unbelievable that would be? I can't though. I mean, like I'm at the park, so it's not like I can just bring a saw out here or just, I wouldn't even need that. I would just kick it actually, but I'm not going to do that. Um, but that would be great. That would be perfect. I'm just being greedy. I actually already have one, but anyway. <clears throat> So, anyway, that's my story. Just figured I would, the other reason I did that is to let that, that dog go, get past me because I didn't want to listen to that. Um, <laughs> but anyway, that's my story pretty much. Um, feels kind of good talking about it. It feels good getting that out because I don't tell that to a lot of people. Not because it's a secret, it's just I never think of it. You know, these days I, when it comes to my progress or whatever... I think about where I am now, you know, I don't, I forget about all the other stuff I went through. I forget about all the other stuff I learned and I, you know, and that I was so passionate about, you know, years ago or, or the, or the changes that happened within me and the things that happened that pushed me in certain directions. It's, it's easy to forget that sometimes when you get wrapped up in other stuff. So it's good to remember, you know, to look back and see the progress you've made and the things that you've done, you know, um, <clears throat> So, anyway. Yeah, that's it for now. Try not to drag this out too badly, but anyway. Just thought I would tell a little bit of my story. Um, anyway. So, I hope that was at least a little bit entertaining for y'all, if nothing else. <laughs> so, thanks for listening. Um, hope that gave y'all some insight. And, um, have a good one.